Hey there, David Mason. I have a couple of new inventions to present that are designed to both detect and communicate with UAP objects. These devices work in the long wave infrared spectrum, so they cover between about 7 to 14 microns, which translates to about 212 Fahrenheit down to about minus 80 Fahrenheit, which is uh, 100 Celsius to about minus 62 Celsius. Uh, these devices are rather unique in uh, what they do and function, and I will uh, present these devices and, and give you a demonstration of, of what we can expect from them. The first device is a FLIR thermal imaging camera that I completely re-engineered. I changed the electronic circuitry, about 80% of the circuitry is of my own circuits, and I changed the function of this uh, FLIR camera. It no longer produces videos or images um, as it was intended. It, what it does is it takes um, modulated long wave infrared and converts it to sound um, or subsonic frequencies or ultrasonic frequencies. In fact, it covers up to about 200 kilohertz in frequency. Uh, this camera has a, um, a volume control, uh, pa pass filter, um, and then a shutoff for the Sterling cooler. So it actually has a built-in cryogenically cooled uh, imager. And this allows the camera to range down in those very cold temperatures where we can measure modulated temperatures that are in the minus temperatures. It has an output jack, which uh, is just the audio out so we can go to a loudspeaker and, and listen to what this camera detects. Um, and this camera also has a, another unique feature built into it is a long wave infrared transmitter. And that's from this lens. So there's a, a device that transmits long wave from signals that are detected in this camera and puts it right back out to the source. So if we come into communication with something, at least we can beam their signals back at them if they are indeed in long wave form. The next device is a long wave infrared transmitter. Uh, this transmits uh, long wave infrared that's modulated. Uh, it covers the audio spectrum. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to work uh, beyond that, but it covers at least audio. Uh, it just has a output lens here. You can feel heat coming from it and it can modulate with music or whatever data we throw on it. Um, and it has a control console. The control console has a modulation level control and a um, intensity control or power control, a massive heat sink. And this was packaged in a rather small box. And this allows us to send long wave infrared uh, signals that are modulated, both AM and FM, they, they become FM because the intensities actually shift spectrum as you go higher and lower, and uh, allows us to do something that certainly hasn't been done before. And I will do a demonstration of this system. So we are listening to Peter Gabriel uh, through this clear thermal camera that I re-engineered, and we're listening to modulated long wave infrared. And uh, it is uh, being modulated by this control console, and then the transmitter is on this side. And then if I block it, blocking the IR, you know, we can hear that it cuts in and out. And so that the music is modulating the long wave infrared, and then being detected by this uh, clear camera. You can hear my hand in front of the lens uh, cutting it in and out. So this is a really unique device. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have a really good set of speakers with me, so we're just listening to these cheap ones. And uh, we're looking at the waveform that's coming off the clear camera. Uh, I'd like to demonstrate a few other things on this. So one thing I'd like to do is set up a ball of ice cream and then modulate that ice cream with uh, an RF source and we would be able to listen to music on ice cream because we'd be changing the temperature of it uh, so because because it's cool will detect very cold temperatures uh, so the reason for this I, I built this thing because many of the FLIR videos I took of UAPs show that they're very cold temperature and some are fluctuating in intensity and I 
can only assume that fluctuation is based on uh, some kind of a communication or, or some other form that we have not yet figured out or understand. So the interesting object I recorded uh, was an orb object that was pulsing. You can clearly see it, it has a, an unusual uh, pulsation to it. Uh, its temperature was somewhere between minus 10 and minus 18 degrees. Here it is zoomed in. And uh, so very cold. I can't think of a natural object that would, would pulse like that and, and be that cold. And uh, this should uh, be something that in this new uh, camera that I've uh, re-engineered, that it could possibly uh, detect that and detect the sound that it's making. Now, it may not be at two cycles a second or what that appeared to be. That object could have been at uh, one or two kilohertz in frequency and it was just asynchronous to the camera frame rates making it appear to pulsate at a lower frame rate. And so possibility is it, it, it has a much higher uh, frequency content to it. But it, it is an interesting phenomenon. So this uh, camera, or I should say this detector I've designed is very sensitive. If I put my hand in front of the lens, we just see a lot of big, jump, large uh, steps. Um, on a previous test, uh, I didn't have the time to do this today, but I ran this system through a bandpass filter, very f uh, strict filter, and it was actually able to see some of the perturbations where the heartbeat or my heartbeat off the surface of the skin because there are micro changes in temperature in, in the surface of our skin. So it might even have a uh, medical application. But anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and uh, it's going to be fun using this new technology uh, that no one has ever seen before and it works very well. Uh, this, this is going to be really exciting. You guys take care.